wonder what they're doing in heaven today. This is Pastor Tommy Bates. I'm so glad you've joined us today on Bridging the Gap. I'm right here in Independence, Kentucky. It's a Sunday night. We're enjoying the presence of God. Oh, yes, hallelujah. <laughs> this is an exciting church. Praise God. My son Joshua says, a church alive is worth the drive. And I want you to meet some folks I've got with me. I've got, well, let's start at the very bottom of the list. This is Ethan. He is the baby of the Bates family. Ethan, look on there and, and smile. <laughs> this is my son Joshua and his wife Megan. This is their baby. This is my wife of 33 years. Is it 33 or more? 33? <laughs> This is the next grandbaby. Oh, yeah, Lakota. Look in that camera right there. Tell them how happy you are to be here. <laughs> now we're going to go all the way down the list over here. This is Graylin. Graylin, you got your Spider-Man out. Look at that camera. Wave to him. All right, Garrison, you look in the camera and wave to him. All right, Emerson, you look in the camera and wave to him, and then you tell him a verse that you've learned, a scripture. Say it nice and slow so everybody can get it. Children. Here, you hold it. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Wow. All right, we're going right now. My son Josh is leading in a song, and we are happy tonight. Let's give Josh a good hand as he comes to sing.
saints of our hands uh, to give the Lord praise uh, that suits to his name. Say hallelujah. We parade him. Come on this freedom in the house today. Uh, let's celebrate the freedom that we have uh, in the name of Jesus. Isn't it amazing? 40 years ago when God called me into the ministry, it was just me by myself as a teenager. And now I've got my children, my grandchildren, all of us working together in the ministry. You know, Jesus has done so much for us that we want to share this glorious gospel with the entire world of His saving grace and His love and His mercy. Our message today is going to be found out of the book of Joel, chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. It says, Blow the trumpet in Zion. It says, To sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation. Let everyone come together. Blow the trumpet in Zion. I'm preaching this message at World Harvest Church, where Pastor Rod Parsley has that incredible, awesome work there. I want us to go into that service as we experience the Word of God today. Joel chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, those that are in the nursery, let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber, let the bride come out of her closet, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord. Give not your inheritance to reproach, that the nations of the world should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Just a simple message tonight that God has stirred on my heart. Simply blow the trumpet. In Zion, let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for this incredible, awesome house. We give honor to the founder and the visionary of this house, Pastor Rod Parsley. I'm asking you, God, to strengthen him tonight. Let his voice be heard, God, like has never been heard before. I stand here in desperate need of the anointing of the Holy Ghost, expecting you, God, to anoint these lips of clay. Anoint the ears that they would hear. Let your word go forth, not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but of demonstration and power of the Holy Ghost. And we'll never fail to give you all the praise and all of the glory in the mighty, wonderful, matchless name of Jesus. And the church says, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I believe we're in one of the most critical times we have ever been in this nation ever before since time of the inception and conception and birth of this nation. I believe we're at a critical point because I believe that this nation has been anointed and appointed and chosen by God to be missionary voices throughout the world, throughout the entire world, shouting the praises of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, just this past weekend, I was preaching in Colorado. We stopped in Salt Lake City, and while we were there, we had a two-hour overlay, and I, we got us something to eat, and I sat there, and the news came on, and I'm not really one to soak up the news a lot, but I sat there for about 20 minutes, and the longer I listened, the wider my eyes got. I got on my iPad, and I began to look things up and research things, and the more I researched, the more oppressed I got, and the more oppressed I got, the more I researched, and that was on Monday, and I, I could not even believe what I was hearing. I got myself in such a, in such a uh, state of concern, in such a state for this nation, that I thought, what in the world is going to happen? It seems like we are in such a critical state that anything could happen. I started imagining in my mind why the White House could even blow up. What could happen to this nation? What is going to happen? And begin to think those thoughts in my mind. And then it was just a few days later, I began to hear certain
certain things that I've heard before, but it seems like when you hear one bit of bad news and then other bad news begins to come on top of it over and over, and I got to hear the doctrines and teachings of the church. I'm not talking about the glorious church that Jesus said, upon this rock I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall pre not prevail against it. I'm talking about this prefabricated, deadbeat religious system that's trying to turn the house of God into an entertainment center and a showcase cinema that has taken the Word of God and watered it down to the point you can't even recognize it, whether it be the Word of God. And I believe by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. But my goodness, to say that we've come to the point that we don't need to confess our sins anymore, that we're just living in grace and it's bondage to praise God and it's bondage to lift up holy hands and it's bondage to be faithful in church attendance and it's bondage to tithe and it's bondage to this. I want to tell you something. Everything in the universe is in order. All the planets are in order. Every botanical flower and shrub is in order. My human body is in order. Thank God it is. I'm glad my knee is bending tonight. I'm glad my shoulders are working tonight. I'm glad my voice is working tonight. And do we think in the United States of America that we've reached such a place of luxury and we've reached such a place of comfort that we no longer in the house of God have to be in order? That we're the only thing in the whole universe that can be out of order? We can come when we want. We can do what we want. We can go where we want. We can say what we want. We can live with who we want to. We can act any way we want to. But let just God's mercy cover over everything. Let God's grace cover it over. I can sleep with you if I'm not married. I can do this. I can watch the filth and the trash. I can be involved in vulgar communication. Just give me a coffee and donut. Put me in a recliner. Let me lay down and enjoy the service. Come on. I, I've, come for, I've come for entertainment. I haven't come to hear. And we believe that the only thing that's allowed to be out of order is us. But I got to thinking of all those things and I got myself so stirred. I mean, I was ready for Sunday morning. I mean, I had a message on the burner. I said, I'm going to preach gloom, despair, and agony on me. I'm going to preach it like I've never preached it before. But Saturday afternoon, something happened. I was riding in my car. All at once, I got a visitation. The presence of the Lord overcame me. And this is what God said. He said, I'm a God of the crisis. I'm a God of the crisis. He said, you never see me show up until there's a fiery furnace. He said, you bring out a lion's den, and there I am. He said, you put a red sea in front of me, and there I am ready. You put hunger, I'm ready to give you manna from heaven. You get thirsty, I'm ready to give you water out of a rock. God said, this is prime time for me. This is my time. He, and I began to preach this morning. I didn't preach gloom, despair, and agony on me. I preached out of Joshua chapter 3. He said, tell your children that you serve a God that has a mighty hand. I preached on the mighty hand of God. Our God hasn't gone asleep. He's not laying in a nursing home somewhere. His eyes have not gone blind. His ears have not gone deaf. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And it changes not. I'm here to declare this nation is in crisis, but God's getting ready to have a supernatural encounter among his people and what a greater place than World Harvest Church that can ignite a revival around this world. Do you hear me? This church has the potential. This church has this platform that you could absolutely cause fire to come down from heaven and ignite in every city. I'm not here for an entertainment show. I'm not here as an itinerant speaker. I'm here to stand in joint agreement with your pastor that no weapon formed against me shall prosper and God's going to have a people that's going to rise up. Yeah. Open your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. 
It takes more than a coffee and donut to get a boy off heroin. It takes more than a pizza and a hot dog to get teenagers off of illicit sexual activity. It takes more than a, than a movie. It takes more than a little social club in order to get somebody out of bondage. It still has been and forever shall be. It's not by might. Not by might, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. It's going to take the Holy Ghost to raise us. It's going to take the Holy Ghost to shake us. It's going to take the Holy Ghost to help us. It's going to take the Holy Ghost to clean us. It's Holy Ghost or nothing. It's going to take God, the Holy Ghost, to stir this nation. Now give God a shout of praise. Yeah, he didn't say, he didn't say blow the trumpet down there in the cinema where they're stripping down naked. No, he didn't say blow the trumpet down there in the hoot nanny where the hoots are carrying on. He didn't say blow the trumpet over there at the shindig where the shindiggers are digging and shigging. <laughs> no, no, no. He didn't say blow the trumpet over here in the club where they're skipping and dancing and hopping and drinking. No. He said the time has come when judgment must begin not out there, but he said in here. Uh -huh. I said, uh-huh. America's looking for a deliverer. America's looking for a savior. But there's no savior in a Democrat and there's no savior in a Republican. There's no savior in a man. There's no savior in a president. There's not a man born of a woman that can get this country out of this mess. There's only one deliverer. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. We're expecting the White House to have a prayer meeting when you can't even get the lazy saints of God to pray. We're expecting the schoolhouse to have a prayer meeting when you can't get hypocritical saints to even pray over their own food. You can't expect the schoolhouse to pray. You can't expect the White House to pray. But you can expect the house of God to be called the house of prayer. I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah. There's only one group of people that have the keys to the kingdom of heaven. That whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. There's only one group of people that has that. That is not this group over here. It's not that group over there. It is the blood bought the redeemed. It is the house of God. It is the bride of Christ. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'm telling you, our God is a crisis God. Our God is a crisis God. I know I know churches have been hit economically. I know churches have been hit socially. I know we've been hit with every arrow there is a hit. But you've hit on us long enough. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is going to rise up mighty inside of his people. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah. I said, yeah. I say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, bless the name of Jesus. I said, bless the name of Jesus. We're looking for a deliverer. We're looking for a savior. We're looking for a champion. In the book of Judges, Judges has a theme. In the days of the Judges, there was no king. Every man, every man, help me while I preach. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. There was no absolute authority. There was no absolute. <laughs> and the Bible said because of this situation, oh, the enemy came. The enemy came to kill. 
the enemy came to steal and the enemy came to destroy but God said nevertheless <laughs> God <laughs> raised up judges another word for judges is deliverers another word for deliverers is champions so the book of judges is filled with champions where are we living right now we're living in the book of Judges. This is a parallel in this nation right now. 1962, a vote of six to one. God and the Bible were expelled from school. 1964, the Beatles entered this country with a very innocent song. I wanna hold your hand. I wanna hold your hand. And the Beatles come and they said, she loves me, yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves me, yeah, yeah, yeah. But little did we know, in the cradled arms of America was coming a demonic Pied Piper <laughs> that was gonna take a generation and lead them into demonic activity and lead them into drugs and lead them into a life of rebellion. Don't forget we have a prayer line to hear your praise reports and any of your prayer requests. We have prayer partners that are eagerly waiting to pray with you. I am so excited because the next four weeks are going to be going into World Harvest Church in this dynamic message, this word. I mean, it just shot out of me. The moment I stood in that pulpit, the power of God came down, and I know that this, these next four weeks are going to be incredible programs. You see, one of the things that God is doing with me in my season of life, I'm a grandfather, as you know that, you've seen, is to bridge the gap between yesterday's anointing to this generation. I was at the Alabama camp meeting where hundreds were gathered, actually thousands were gathered together, and Miss Teen Alabama was there. I want to introduce you to Miss Teen Alabama. She's filled with the power and the Spirit of God, and I want you to see how God is bridging this gap. Guess what? I've got Miss Teen Alabama with me right now. She is Pentecostal, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking with other tongues, and we're just so thankful that God has blessed her. Hallelujah. Another thing I want to tell you about Alexis is she was adopted when she was a baby. And you know, Esther was adopted and became Queen of Persia. There are some of you young people out there that are watching and you say, well, you know, things haven't been going well in my life. I, I just feel like that I've been pushed here and I've been pushed there. But Alexis, tell them how good that God is. The Lord's been so good to me. He actually took me out of a home where my mother was addicted to drugs and actually tried to abort me. My father, the day that my parents came in to adopt me, was in the bathroom shooting up on drugs. So it doesn't matter where you've been or where you're going. God has a purpose and a plan for your life that he's going to take you to. Trust in him and always hold his hand. <laughs> well, let's give God praise for Miss Teen Alabama is praising and magnifying God. Thank you, Alexis. Wow, what a joy. What a joy to see how that God is touching this young generation out of the prophecy of Joel that said in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon your sons and upon your daughters. We are not giving up our seed. You know, the greatest joy I have is to see my grandchildren with tears running down their face, praising the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we're going to put all of this together on a product and one special product for you. And it's called Blow the Trumpet in Zion. So the next four weeks is going to be some incredible preaching. And you're going to, when we get to the altar service, I know that's going to be, you know, three more weeks from now. But when you see how the power of God moves in that altar service and a multitude of young people are touched by the power of God, this is going to be a product that is going to inspire you. It's also going to help this ministry.
I want to thank all of our partners and you that have joined with us. Without your partnership, we wouldn't be able to do anything that we're doing right now presently. It's with your help. You know, the Bible talks about how when we come together, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, and the building of Christ, it expresses His love and His glory and His life. So we come together to do something for the grace and the mercy of God. We love you so much. And if God's dealing with you to partner with this ministry, there will be more information on the screen. And you can get this product by calling our toll-free number during this program, or you can visit our website at any time. Oh, hallelujah. You know, it's so hard to believe our time comes and goes so quickly, but it's a joy to be in your home. We love you so much. I want you to pray for this ministry, and oh my goodness, you've got to tell your friends to stay tuned for the next three weeks because these are dynamic, power-packed services. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Come on this freedom in the house today uh, Let's celebrate the freedom that we have uh, In the name of Jesus uh, We're praying Praise your name Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.